your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. For I'm a jolly good fellow, for they are jolly good fellows. For we are jolly good fellows, and nobody, nobody can, can deny. deny. And I deny. Quiet, for heaven's sake, we'll wake up the whole neighborhood. There isn't any neighborhood around. We are alone in the middle of the night. In the middle of our driveway. In the middle of Connecticut. For it's a jolly good fellow for, for those that go... For heaven's sakes, you will wake up the neighbors. He moved to the country, Mrs. Brown, so he'd have no neighbors. We're all alone in the middle of the night. In the middle of our driveway. In the middle mm-hmm. of Connecticut. I think we ought to maybe be quieter. Yes, we should. Sure. Tom travels far in the dead of night, and there are some people who live a half a mile or so away. Well, let's go in the house. We can be as noisy as we want. And wake up Fritz and Bertha and the baby and the cat and the dog and the rooster? I should say not. If we are going to be noisy, we will be noisy quietly. Agreed. Out here in the driveway. Agreed. Agreed. For Mama is a jolly good fellow. For Claudia is a jolly good fellow. For Dave is a jolly good fellow that nobody can deny. Pretty good. What time is it, jolly good fellow? Half past eleven. Already? Oh, what a wonderful first anniversary we celebrated. I'm stuffed with lobster up to my ears. They were wonderful lobsters. Not bad, not bad. Oh, you're so blase. I hate to go in the house. It's such a beautiful, coolish night. I don't know about you, but I'm off to bed. My lobsters are getting sleepy. They tell me lobsters do need a lot of sleep. David, do you have the key? Well, certainly I have the key. I think Mama's right. It's time for all good people to go to bed. But I don't want to be good people. I want to keep on celebrating my first wedding anniversary all night. We'll celebrate it while you're asleep. And just tonight, I'll bet you I won't dream. Life's like that. Give me the key, David. Look, just because I'm going to Give bed, me... no reason for you to... If it's good enough for you, Mama, it's good enough for us. Shh. Listen to the crickets. Listen to the crickets. Hmm? That's no crickets. He's coming to wish us a happy first wedding anniversary. Congratulations, David Norton. Congratulations, Claudia Norton. Congratulations, Congratulations, Mrs. Mrs. Brown. Brown. I thank you. I thank you. Nothing at all. She's a beautiful night. So many stars. I'm glad we moved to the country. There are many more stars in the country than there are in New York. And two of the brightest ones are in your eyes. You're so poetical. It's the lobster in me that's talking. Are <laughs> oh, we <laughs> going to stand on this doorstep all night? It's a lovely doorstep, too. Everything is lovely. <laughs> Bluff has come to join us. Yeah, Bluff, oh. Come on. Come on, old boy. Come on, boy. Oh, such a good sight. We should have taken him with us. It wasn't nice to leave him home when we were out celebrating. Oh, Bluff, oh, you wouldn't want to come, would you? You wanted to stay here and protect our homestead. That big sissy, he couldn't protect a mouse. So <laughs> shock, Bluff. Be quiet. Quiet, boy. Quiet. Quiet. Down. Down. Oh, now he's gone and awakened all his friends. There'll be no peace in Eastbrook tonight. There should be no peace in Eastbrook tonight. After all, it's our first wedding anniversary, isn't it? Thank goodness it only comes once a year. It only comes once a year to the outside world. But to me, it comes 365 times and on leap year 366. Well, what do you know, Mama? Your daughter knows how many days there are in a year. The little show-off. Good night. Good night. You don't really mean it, do you? Oh, yes, I do. I don't know why you're fussing with that key, Mrs. Brown. The door is not locked. Why didn't you tell me? I've been ruining my eyes looking for that keyhole. Well, they don't lock doors in Connecticut. Now, I shall disappear into the house. You're not supposed to disappear until midnight. Are you hinting that I'm an old witch on a broom? No, 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 no. You are the fairy godmother on a moonbeam. Oh, I can't take any more of this. You're turning my head. (laughs) Good night, children. Good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. Sweet dreams. And I do want to say this. It's been a lovely year. Hasn't it? You both made me very happy. I sleep very easily now. It's the country air that does it. More than that, you know it. Anyway, here's to another year and lots more country air. Good night. So long, Mrs. Brown. I hope I'll be like Mama someday. Well, every chicken becomes an egg, or every egg becomes a chicken. Every egg does not become a chicken. You told me so. Now, don't split yolk. Oh, no more, no more. Oh, I hate calling it a night. 
Let's take a little walk. You feel like walking at the strangest time. What's strange about the middle of the night? Anyway, whoever said the night was lonesome was just crazy. No, I don't think he was so crazy. There are nights that never end and nights that can be terrifying when you're alone. Don't you ever feel alone? No, not anymore. Do you used to? I certainly did. After your father died, the nights must have been terrifying. And before I met you. I missed something, didn't I? I'm glad you missed it. I wonder. I've been so lucky. Everything was always so perfect. Mama and I, and before I'd even outgrown being a daughter, there was you. I was a wife. Then, not such a bad wife at that. David, I don't know how you stood me the first few months we were married. I had to hang on my teeth some of the time, I'll admit. I just didn't know anything <laughs> about anything. Oh, what a dope I was. Now look, you don't have to convince me of that. I wasn't good for <laughs> anything. I was an ignoramus around the house. Ignoramus, that's right. Remember the things I used to try and cook? I certainly do. <laughs> the pies I burned, Ooh. the eggs I hard-boiled, and the salmon mousse we ate for days and days oh, and days and oh, days and oh, days. Oh, don't talk about salmon. My lobster resents it. <laughs> Listen, you remember the time I scraped the paint off the window with your razor blade? Mm-hmm, I certainly do. I tried to scrape the beard off my face with the same blade. Oh, no, forget You know, I ought to whale the daylights out of you, come to think of it. You did? <laughs> A good whaling? <laughs> A swell whaling. Well. Yeah. Shakespeare, hello, little kitty, 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 kitty. Isn't anybody asleep tonight? Of course not. It's our anniversary. Well, let's see. Only 20 more minutes of it. David, let's sit down here on the side of our own hill. You can see out all over the country. Look, there's a light in Mama's room. I bet you 20 cents she went in and kissed Bobby goodnight. That is not a fair bet. Of course she did. Look at how the light in her room shows up the green in all the trees. How long the shadows are. Mm-hmm. It's the only light for miles. Still. Poor Shakespeare. Maybe we ought to get him married, too. Maybe he is. Who knows? Cats tell no tales. But Shakespeare has such a beautiful one. Mm. I kill myself. You certainly do. Remember the night you you gave him to me? I uh, most positively do. Oh. That was one of the most brilliant maneuvers of my career as a husband, if I do say so myself. Brilliant? Brilliant. Poor Shakespeare. You were nothing but a little red herring for David's cold. I wonder if Shakespeare remembers his brother. Well, I certainly do so funny about life. What is? It's always taking hostages. For everything you receive, you have to give something back. That holds even for cats. We have Shakespeare, but to keep him, we lost his brother. You've learned a big lesson. Well, I have an awful lot of big lessons left to learn. Now we have a son. I wonder what he'll cost us. Mm. He costs you a lot already. I don't mean money. No. I don't mean money either. What hostage for Bobby, David? A part of us. I don't mind being less free than I was. It's a very small price. So far, we're lucky. That's the only price to date, but there are others. Peace of mind, I suppose. I guess behind the great excitement of having a baby is the realization that in the having, there can also be loss. That makes Bobby twice as valuable. Golly. <laughs> I certainly started out a year ago not knowing from beans. <laughs> well, you had a big dose of beans, huh? <laughs> I've gotten so I even like beans. <laughs> Think, just a year ago, we were married. Just you and I. Only two people in the whole world. No responsibilities, no problems, no nothing. Don't tell me, young woman, you didn't feel that you had a great adjustment to make. Maybe I was maladjusted before I got married, because I don't feel as if I had to get adjusted all <laughs> over again. As a matter of fact, I feel adjusted now for the first time, I think. In five years, you'll look back on tonight and wonder what you were so conceited about. That's exactly what I'm doing now. I mean, about a year ago. Mm -hmm. It's been quite a year, hasn't it? Look at us. Sitting on the side of our hill, on our very own farm. This doesn't seem possible. With our own son, our very own cat, our very own dog and rooster. 
But we've certainly multiplied. Not to mention Fritz and Bertha. Mm. Oh, Mama put her light out. How much darker it is now. It always is. You know, David, it used to be when I read a book, I always had to peek at the last chapter first. Not anymore? Now, I'd rather wait. Well, don't grow up too fast. Or I won't catch up with you. Say, it's almost midnight. I better give you your anniversary present, hmm? Not another one. I haven't given you any one so far. Much. What is it? Ooh, now you're greedy. Well, if you're going to give it to me, come on, give it to me. Don't make me die waiting. Close your eyes and open your hands. Another hostage. Can't I keep my eyes open, too? You may not. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'm closed. All right. Hurry up. Now. Now, open your eyes. I don't have to. I know what it is. I can feel it in the palm of my hand. Well, if you're so smart... Before I open my eyes, slip it on my finger, David. Hold out your hand. There you are. Beautiful. Engagement ring. Before you say I shouldn't have spent the money, the stone was my mother. I'm glad. I hope wherever she is, she knows. Better late than never, hmm? The day earlier would have been too soon. I don't think people really know what getting engaged to be married means. For a long time after. It's very becoming to you. My engagement ring is beautiful. Just the way it glitters. Even in the dark. I, uh, I didn't mean your ring. What did you mean, David? Very becoming to you. Being married is. I don't know what I'd do without you. I love you, Mrs. Norton. And I love you, Mr. Norton. With the greatest of pleasure, the greatest of love, all. If the man of the house comes home and says he's invited a few folks over for the evening, do you look surprised and pleased, or just surprised? You can greet such announcements with carefree pleasure if you always keep enough Coca-Cola on ice for hospitality. You might check your supply of Coke right now to be sure you're prepared for unexpected guests. Mr. King, have Claudia and David come into the house yet? Mm, yes, just a few minutes ago. Strange. I didn't hear them. Well, perhaps they were more subdued than usual. Well, they must have been. Still, they were very gay when I left them. Our mood changes. An anniversary isn't all gaiety. It's a reckoning, too. Well, as long as they're safely tucked in, I guess I'll go back to bed. Sweet dreams, Mrs. B. I'll have them. Life is sweet, hell dreams are. Claudia agrees to that tonight, but ask her tomorrow night, Mrs. Brown, and she'll tell you it's a dog's life. A what? It's a dog's life. And there are moments when she'll wish she could go to the dogs. Well, that sounds fascinating. I'll be around tomorrow to hear the box. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment... Think of Coca-Cola, for Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>